Today I'd like to continue our discussion on joy <coughs> from the Book of Joy. Uh, and in this section of the book, uh, there's a lot of discussion about uh, suffering and how to deal with suffering. Uh, and the Dalai Lama, looking at it from the Buddhist perspective, uh, mentions that and he says, you know, when you become a refugee like he did and all the suffering that he had to go through, uh, leaving his home in Tibet, uh, traveling undercover uh, into India, not knowing whether he would arrive safely or not, undergoing many deprivations on the journey. Very difficult, very hard for him. And he said, that the lesson he learned was that when you become a refugee, you actually get closer <coughs> to life. Uh, his existence before then, the situation, was a very privileged one. And as a refugee, he had to really experience things that he probably never would have experienced if he had remained in Tibet and uh, remained in his uh, comforts there. So being a refugee actually helped him, made him a better person, made him understand life more, made him understand what people go through uh, a lot more in their everyday lives. And he mentions the famous Chinese story of the farmer. Uh, and the farmer's horse had run away. And everyone said, oh, you have such bad luck. Your prize stallion has run away. Uh, and the farmer retorted to that and said, well, no one can know exactly what is good and what is bad because there are many circumstances to that. There are many different aspects to what is good and what is bad. It's not a simple black and white situation. It, it's very complicated. Exactly what is good and what is bad. Uh, and to illustrate that, the farmer said, the horse comes back now with a wild stallion. Do you think, ah, I've had good luck. I have my horse back, and as a bonus, I get this wild stallion. Oh my goodness, I thought I had bad luck. Now, ah, alas, good luck. However, the farmer's son was trying to tame that wild stallion, and it was very difficult, it was very hard. The stallion had never been tamed before. And so, lo and behold, the stallion throws the boy off and he breaks his leg. Oh my goodness. Now I went from the good luck of getting my horse back and as a bonus, a wild stallion. Now my son has his leg broken. Oh, I thought I had good luck. Now I have bad luck. But then the farmer's son was spared being constricted conscripted into the army because of his broken leg. <laughs> so there we have the bad luck of the broken leg leading to the good luck of not having to go into the army and facing possible death. So what is good luck? What is bad luck? It evolves and sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we think something really wonderful has happened to us. And it turns out not to be so. And sometimes something very bad, and it leads to something good. And in the Dalai Lama's case, what was seen as very bad, being deposed uh, in his position, having to leave Tibet, turned out for him to be something very good. It was wonderful. It helped him tremendously. Desmond Tutu recalls similar uh, experiences with Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela, as we remember uh, early on in his life, was imprisoned for uh, protesting against the government and for some actions that he had taken. And so he was put in a prison, very difficult uh, prison life. And he went in the prison, he was very, very angry. Uh, angry at the government, 
and Guido's imprisonment. Just an awful, awful situation for him. But after 27 years of terrible treatment, humiliations, deprivations, all sorts of awful things that happened to him while he was in prison, he came out a very kind person and a very caring person because of the treatment that he had had. In a way, he was transformed. He was changed by that prison experience. And in his own suffering, he found meaning, he found purpose, and he became a better person, a stronger person, a person more capable, actually, of reaching out to others with compassion. And really, that suffering made him more fit for the difficult negotiations that he had to undertake in order to achieve freedom for the black people in South Africa. Desmond Tutu, uh, in reflecting on this, says that our muscles grow when we face resistance. It actually, the resistance has a physical effect on us. We know this, of course, from weight training. You know, when there is resistance to the muscles, when we challenge the muscles, when we try to expand the muscles, they're going to grow. And uh, some suffering is involved. We sometimes use that expression, no pain, no gain. We have to stretch ourselves. And of course, it's that fine balance between not doing too much, you know, not trying to pick up, uh, you know, a thousand pounds <laughs> in our first heave, uh, but, you know, gradually building up our muscles in a, in a very appropriate way. They become stronger. And things that we could not lift, now we lift rather easily. So the muscles become trained. The suffering, the pain, helps us to be a better, stronger, more capable person. The opposite example, of course, would be a person who is what we use in the current parlance, a couch potato. <laughs> you know, someone who's there with his bag of Doritos or potato chips or pretzels on the couch all the time. Uh, doesn't do much physical exercise, tends to add weight, <laughs> and the muscles go downhill pretty quickly, uh, and the person really doesn't achieve that much by being that type of couch potato. So some suffering, some challenge uh, can be positive for us, can be good in our lives. So when we look at the complicated interaction between joy and suffering, we can see that it's not a simple formula, because sometimes that good luck is not all that good, and that bad luck can be very good. A lot of it depends on our attitude, and how we embrace the suffering, and how we try to see the good in the suffering, and how we try to stretch ourselves to become a better, more joy-filled person.